The meeting will come to order. Our guest chaplain today is Pastor James A. Terrence, Jr. for Friendship Baptist Church. Would all who are able please stand for the invocation and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Indeed, it is another day's journey and we are glad about it. We gather with humility and with grateful hearts, thankful for the opportunity to tend to the business of your citizens. Praying now, God, that you would give these your servants wisdom, discernment, and compassionate hearts. May they govern with integrity and with honesty, and may you be honored in doing so. In your name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd say the exact opposite. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I would say the exact opposite. Is that the fact that we have the meeting? Yes. Will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Here. Davis. Here. Ford. Present. Johnson. Here. Curls. Present. Reed. Present. Glover. Present. Marcuson. Present. Serco. Present. Brooks. Here. Taylor. Here. Sharp. Here. James. Twelve present. Will the clerk call the special actions? 130028, recognizing the sustainability initiatives of community outreach of Formland Foods, Kansas City facility. Matt Bowles and others are present to receive the special action. That's my sharp. <coughs> Thank you very much, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, it's my uh, privilege to uh, sponsor this resolution today, recognizing the sustainability initiatives and community outreach of Farmland Foods Kansas City facility, which is in the, Mar which is in the Martin City area of Kansas City. Uh, uh, Farmland Foods has donated so much time and money and effort to help build a better community. Uh, uh, for instance, they donated over 18,000 pounds of hams to various local charities, and uh, their employees provided over 400 hours of community outreach. Uh, they've been honored uh, with several sustainability awards, the uh, Farmland Sustainability Best of the Best Award, Smithfield Sustainability Commendation Award, Missouri Water Environment Association Industrial Water Quality Achievement Award, and the Keep America Beautiful Distinguished Service Citation National Award. So they are truly a good corporate citizen. I think it is appropriate we recognize them for their efforts. The resolution is before the council. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The resolution is passed. Would you like to say something? Yes, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Sharp, and uh, council uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. On behalf of Farmland Foods, a proud Kansas City employer, uh, we thank you for your recognition of our efforts in sustainability and community outreach. We are proud to serve the citizens of Kansas City and employ uh, uh, persons here within Kansas City. I'd like to turn over to my boss real quick, Mr. Martin Seavers, plant manager, say a few words. Thank you again. We, we are very proud to be here, and we're proud to be a Kansas City employer. I, I took to echo Matt's uh, appreciation. We do appreciate the recognition. Um, again, we have a lot of good employees that work for us, and those are the employees that help us get to that, uh, the level that we are at and to help other people around us. So again, thank you for everything. The recognition is very much uh, appreciated. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Will the clerk call the next special action? One zero 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 three one, recognizing De Delta Sigma Theta Sororities Continental Weekend. Jacqueline Dillard and others are present to receive the special action. Councilman Reed. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. 
I uh, rise today to recognize the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta sorority for their centennial weekend. Uh, the city of Kansas City, Missouri uh, recognizes them uh, for their sorority was incorporated uh, January the 13th, 1913. And they, this past weekend, celebrated 100 years. And just a, some brief history about the organization, it was founded by 22 uh, African-American females on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C. The sorority is one of the largest long-standing organizations in, in the United States with a sisterhood of more than 200,000 predominantly black college-educated women and with over 900 chapters located in the United States, England, Japan, Germany, the Virgin Islands, and many more. Uh, Delta Sigma Theta promotes public service, community involvement, and sisterhood. Uh, also with the, some key points of economic development, educational development, international awareness, and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement as well. The um, chapter that is here in Kansas City, Missouri, was founded on a day that uh, is special to me because it was my birthday, June 13th, although I wasn't born, 1969. That's when it was founded, uh, the alumni chapter here in Kansas City, by 17 dedicated uh, Deltas who individually signed uh, their official application to be a chapter here in Kansas City, Missouri. I am proud to uh, have benefited from the Deltas and their D Foundation, which provides scholarships for uh, young people. And I was one of the scholarship recipients uh, uh, 10 years ago uh, when I went off to college. And thank you, for, thank you to the Deltas for making sure that that happened. So today we join um, many people all across this world who are celebrating the 100 year celebration of your organization and keep up the good work and all that you all do for the community here in Kansas City and all the Deltas, devastating ladies in the <laughs> ring of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. Councilwoman Markerson. Thank you. I happened to be in Washington, D.C. Uh, last weekend, and I can tell you this is an active, vibrant, large sorority because every place you went, you saw a sea of red. Mm -hmm. You could not get it down the, the hotel elevator because women in red were filling it and they just uh, were having such a great time. It's the sisterhood was obvious and um, the Kappa Kappa Grandma sorority <laughs> of the council joins with you. <laughs> our sisters. That's not a real sorority now, and, come on. Yes, really, uh, <laughs> Women's, women's groups, vibrant women's really? groups can get a lot done. Really? So uh, it's really good to, good to have you here and um, keep, keep it up. <laughs> Councilwoman Curls. Thank you, Ma Madam Mayor. I too would not like to honor the uh, Deltas for all the community service you do and for the young people that you help all over this country. And uh, see, I have my red on today in honor of you. <laughs> and I think I saw some Deltas on Good Morning America out in the audience hold, outside holding up signs. <laughs> that was you? Okay. I was, <laughs> I was cheering from home. <laughs> so, uh, no, you really do. Uh, you're very philanthropic, and, and we all appreciate you and your sorority. So thank you for all that you do. Clerk, I noticed that somehow my office missed, but we add uh, my name as a sponsor also. The resolution is before the council. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the resolution is passed. Who would like to speak? I would. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Rotem. If you know anything about Delta, we always have something to say and definitely have a few words. I know how busy the council is as a city employee. You guys have a busy agenda. My name is Jacqueline Dillard, and I'm the first vice president of the Kansas City, Missouri Alumni Chapter. And on behalf of our chapter president, Sandita Moss, and our 234 chapter members, a few that are here today, we had a ball this weekend, so I'm not surprised that they're not in the house today. <laughs> But I'm glad that there was a witness to our centennial weekend because we painted D.C. red. And that's just D.C. because we did the same in Kansas City, Missouri as well with our local chapters and chapters in Kansas. But what I would like to speak to on the proclamation, which is true, we are the largest African-American Greek letter sorority. However, we have over 300 
1,000 members initiated into our organization with 1,000 chapters around the world. And what we do by saying sorority is only a small piece. It really does not speak to the work that we do in the community. And so I'm proud to say in Kansas City, Missouri, that we are recognized because, yes, we was on Good Money in America and Today Show and all that good stuff, but to, to know that at home, the people that we support, that we, you know, represent wherever we go, recognize our organization. And so we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Happy 100th anniversary. <laughs> Thanks for coming down. <laughs> Happy 100th anniversary. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for coming down. Happy 100th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. So much for coming out. Yes. Yes. Will the clerk call the communications? 130022, emergency regulations E41485 and 486. Received and filed 130036, notice to the city clerk from Postonelli Stuttgart on behalf of Plaza Vista, a petition establishing the 4840 CID. Received and filed 130037, notice to the city clerk from Postonelli Stuttgart on behalf of 51st and Main, a petition established the 5050 Main Street CID. Received and filed. 130038, notice to the city clerk from King Hershey regarding the submission of the proposed budget for fiscal year ending April 30th, 2014, for the Shoal Creek Valley Community Improvement District. Received and filed. 130039, notice to the city clerk from Shops on Blue Parkway Community Improvement District regarding their proposed budget for fiscal year ending mm -hmm. April 30th, 2014. Received and filed. 130040, notice to the mayor and council, city council from the city clerk pursuant to Rule 28A, listing the semi-annual docket items considered by the Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee, Neighborhood and Healthy Services Committee, uh, Plain Zoning Economic Development Committee, Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, Public Safety and Emergency Services, and Legislative Committees had no semi-annual docket items to consider. Received and filed. The city, the city clerk has compiled with rule, compiled with rule 20A and rule 20-A of the council's standing rules by printing the semi-annual docket, which listed all ordinances and resolutions more than six months old and not acted on by the council. Each committee has made its recommendations as to which of those ordinances should be released, and a list of those recommendations has been provided to the council as an attachment to the clerk's communications number 130040. Unless otherwise requested, the listed ordinances and resolutions will be released from the docket and are to be deemed lost. Does anyone have an objection to the release of the listed ordinances? Councilman Ford. Thank you, Honorable Madam Mayor. I ask the following ordinances that were recommended for release by the Planning, Zoning, Economic Development Committee remain on the committee docket for an additional six months. Those are ordinances numbers 080924, 080925, 080926, 080927, 080928, and 080929. These are Southtown Urban Life TIF ordinances, and the TIF staff has recommended that they not be released at this time. The clerk shall delete the list. Um, she submitted to the council each ordinance for which there has been a request that it remain in committee. The remaining ordinances and resolutions on the list deemed lost, and the city clerk shall so mark them. The clerk may proceed with the printed docket. 130015, directing the city auditor to conduct an audit of the implementation of the city's Kansas City Museum Management Agreement with Union Station, Kansas City. 
Finance Committee recommends to pass. Councilwoman Marcus. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee has reviewed this and recommends uh, that for that be immediately adopted. This is directing the uh, city auditor to uh, begin a to. Uh, do a scope state statement for looking over the agreement that the Kansas City Museum has with Union Station uh, as we look toward the possibility of making the museum a separate 501c3 in order to uh, generate more grants. So Mr. Uh, Wagner has, is part of the board along with uh, Councilman Glover and me and he has also been has some, has some words for this. Councilman Wagner. Uh, thank you Madam Mayor. Not too many other than uh, just for some uh, perspective uh, the Kansas City Museum Advisory Board was uh, set up in uh, 2004 and uh, I have been a member of that organization uh, and that board since then throughout the various uh, administrations that have come. Uh, in 2007 we set up a new management agreement with Union Station Kansas City who has acted as the manager ever since the merger of the Kansas City Museum and Union Station was formed back in the late 90s. Um, it has been five years since we have done that so at the very least uh, practicing good governance uh, we wanted to uh, go ahead and do this uh, as a way to figure out the next steps. Um, as when the museum was in the first district uh, prior uh, to this council, uh, the first district invested a lot in the structure of Corinthian Hall and its grounds, and it now has a good envelope uh, for which uh, a museum exhibits can be shown in the future, although finishes must be performed in order for that to occur. And that's one of the things that uh, we'll look into hopefully with the audit is to see uh, how all of that's progressing and then what to do uh, moving forward in order to perform all that work that needs to be completed. Um, my final addition as uh, when we did the presentation in the committee yesterday there was a request for a fact sheet. Uh, one has been provided and should be in everyone's documents and, um, and with that I, I want to thank my fourth district colleagues for their continued support for the museum. Although it left the first district the museum is in good hands in the fourth. Thank you Madam Mayor. Seeing no further discussion will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Twelve ayes. The resolution is passed. Will the clerk proceed with the third reading debate docket? 121066, releasing and abating a certain special tax assessment issued by the city upon property owned by Swope Community Builders at 3200 Brighton Avenue. Finance Committee recommends due pass. Councilwoman Markerson. Thank you. The Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee has reviewed this and recommends due pass. There was some very, very blighted apartment buildings at 3200 Brighton and Swope Parkway Community Builders and the city joined together to demolish this to make way for a uh, veterans uh, facility cl close to the uh, VA hospital and I know Councilwoman Curls worked very hard on this last session and she came to the counts to the uh, hearing and testified on this so I appreciate her hard work on this and again it's improving an area of the city that uh, is ripe for redevelopment and we're pleased to uh, get going on this. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Glover. Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Twelve ayes. The ordinance is passed. 121072, providing for submission to the qualified voters of the city for their approval at an election call for Tuesday, April 2nd, 2013. The question of renewing the ad valorem tax levy for a period of nine years for ambulance services, emergency medical services, hospital, and public health purposes at the current level of 22 cents per $100 assessed valuation on real, intangible, real pro personal property within the city, directing the city clerk to notify the responsible election authorities of the election and recognizing this ordinance to be an emergency measure. Finance Committee recommends to pass. Councilwoman Markerson. Thank you, Mayor. The Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass. This will place the renewal of the health levy on the ballot in April, uh, and we have thoroughly uh, vetted this with our through our health commission through many different citizen groups uh, through the council and uh, unfortunately uh, indigent health care has become a very important service of our city unlike other cities but um, we are very very interested in providing that care for our citizens and uh, appreciate the fact that so many people have come together to help get this uh, before the voters so I'm sure there are others on the council Mr. Ford and Mr. Brooks I know uh, we're very active in working on this and as Mr. Sharp on the Public Safety Committee. So, Thank recommend you. due pass. Councilman Sharp. 
Thank you very much, uh, and Madam Mayor Pro Tem. I uh, did want to mention just a few things uh, regarding the ambulance service and the uh, health levy. Uh, we discussed uh, the uh, very low rates of, of pay that we're able to uh, get from Missouri Medicaid and, and from people who are medically indigent and don't have any health insurance in business session. But uh, I did have some figures that I, I thought I had with me and then I couldn't find them and it turned out I'd pass them out along with the, the other handouts and Mr. Klein was kind enough to retrieve them. Uh, but just to give you an example of, of the low reimbursement rates uh, we have now in Missouri under Missouri Medicaid, uh, the reimbursement rate <coughs> for an advanced life support non-emergency transport is $167.20 from the Missouri Medicaid. Uh, the uh, base rate that's charged is $450. So even if you collect on all of those, and sometimes it's very difficult to get Medicaid to pay, but the uh, amount it pays is only 37.2% of the billed amount. And on emergency transports, it's even worse because uh, uh, Missouri Medicaid pays $194.79. Uh, the base rate is $750. So even if you collect on every one of those, it's only 26% of the amount billed. But I did want to uh, uh, tell uh, all of the council, and I, I think most of you are aware of it, but you know the fire department uh, reports to the public safety committee, and we do send that information around to the full council, but it's when we all have committee meetings, it's hard to know what every other committee is doing. Uh, but, but I'm firmly convinced that uh, uh, with the new fire chief, Chief Berardi, and the new uh, deputy chief in charge of the Medical Bureau, Tom Collins, uh, that the department is making great strides to improve their response times throughout the city. We've had some challenges in the Northland, uh, particularly, and in the South, but uh, I, I'm thoroughly convinced and can say without reservation that, that they're on the right track. Uh, one of the, the big things that was a great improvement was when uh, the police department detention center uh, contracted for on-site medical personnel. So we're not tying up emergency ambulances for sometimes an hour and an hour or an hour and a half uh, going to the detention center, which takes some time just to get up there on calls that really aren't emergencies and that can be handled by uh, uh, on-site medical personnel. And, and that has freed those ambulances to respond to real emergencies. But it is essential not only for our, our great uh, uh, health safety net providers like Truman Medical Center, like Swope and Rogers to, to extend this health levy, it's essential to continue the improvements on our ambulance service. I think we all know about the pilot programs that are being developed by the fire department to improve emergency medical service. And one of the programs that I think has great potential is to allow the department's paramedics that they, they've had on the force for some time to actually utilize all their skills because in the past they weren't allowed to function as paramedics. And this should have been done, in my opinion, decades ago. But the pilot program to uh, allow the, to assign paramedics to certain pumpers in areas of the city where it's hard to, to have real fast response times from ambulances will start February 10th. And there will be paramedics on two pumpers uh, that the pumpers will have the uh, life-saving medical equipment for them to fully utilize their skills. And one pumper will be at Station 3's at 111th and North Oak, an area where we've had real problems with the response times. The other will be at Station 41's on uh, uh, just north of Bannister on Hillcrest. So again, that will really help in those two areas that are, that are difficult to serve quickly. But I'm even more excited about another program that's going to start in February, and we've talked about that briefly, and that's to improve the training of our emergency medical technicians so they can provide additional life-saving skills and procedures until paramedics get there. And that program is going to be started in February as well. And uh, we will be providing additional training to the EMTs, so they will be labeled EMTs intermediate. They'll be able to start IVs. They could administer sugar to, for diabetics who are suffering from hypoglycemia, which is, is a very serious condition. Uh, they can do 
advanced airway procedures such as intubations. They could administer, administer certain drugs such as those used to counteract severe allergic reactions. And they'll be trained to interpret EKGs to assess uh, patients' heart problems. So they'll be really setting the stage. So when the paramedics get there, the, these basic procedures will have already be will already have been done, and they can communicate to the paramedics clearly what the situation is, so they can continue their life-saving work. They will be going through not just a, a little bit of training for this. They'll be going through a fully accredited training program at UMKC, and it's a 10-week training program and they'll have supervised, hands-on field training after that. This is a great step forward for our emergency medical system. But as you can imagine, this training costs money. It would be very difficult for us to continue the, these great steps forward for our emergency medical system if we don't get the continuation of this health levy. So I did want to make the full council aware of that and, and to let you know that I, I think and I think we all share the feeling that we're on the right track and, and we're going to have one of the, the best uh, emergency medical systems in the nation, but, but we need funding to continue it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Sharp. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I first want to thank the Finance, Government, Governance, and Ethics Committee for their recommendation on this very important issue and ballot measure. Uh, I want to publicly thank my colleagues. We have, as you know, 12 co-sponsors for this uh, ordinance to place the health levy renewal on the ballot. Uh, this did come to us uh, by a unanimous recommendation of the Kansas City Health Commission, which I'm privileged to serve on and Councilman Michael Brooks is co-chair of. So there's a, a wide recognition of, uh, of what this means to Kansas City. Uh, Dr. Archer testified in Finance Committee that our best estimates that about 67,000 Kansas Cityans do not have health insurance. If you think of it, it's basically that would amount to one entire council district. And, and through the years of the health levy, the uh, safety net providers in Truman have provided services for 45,000 Kansas Cityans. One of the real benefits to being a resident of Kansas City is that if you lose your health insurance or you don't have health insurance, you'll still have access to quality health care. Thanks to Truman Hospital, the safety net providers, uh, the ambulance service, and this health levy. Thank you. Councilman Brooks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it is uh, a great privilege of mine to help also co-sponsor this ordinance and also the service co-chair of health commission. Uh, with all the things that we have set as priorities, I think this is one of the big ones as well. Our healthy, healthy net providers uh, provide a valuable service to our citizens, and uh, I hope that we would get the message out to all of our constituents that uh, passing this on April 2nd is really uh, something that we must do, because without it, there are a number of individuals in our city that are served. Uh, certainly without their help, without Swope and Samuel Rogers and, and Truman, uh, there'll be a number of individuals that uh, just don't have access to help. In spite of what President Obama has done and was trying to be done in Washington, D.C., Missouri has a long way to go before I think we're going to take advantage of that. And so with what we have in place here, uh, our, our citizens have really available to them uh, health care out this passing uh, that's going to be put in jeopardy. And so I hope that message is across. All. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Aye. Lover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Twelve ayes. The ordinance is passed. One two one zero four six. Approving an amendment to the Greater Downtown Area Plan for approximately an acre an area of less than one acre generally located at the southeast corner of East 21st Street and Troost Avenue and Missouri Route 71 by changing the recommended land use from downtown residential to industrial. Planning Zoning Committee recommends it be adopted. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This resolution, the next ordinance, uh, deal with a uh, cell phone tower. And under current zoning code, we are required to rezone uh, an area with a cell tower to uh, industrial. 
and, and that's a reason for the rezoning and the uh, resolution amending the uh, area plan. Planning Zoning Economic Development Committee has reviewed this resolution and the next ordinance and recommends do pass. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk call the order or the roll? Wagner. <laughs> Davis. Aye. Say Davis. Yes, sir. Aye. <laughs> Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Markson. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Seven eyes. The ordinance is passed. 121047, rezoning an area of less than an acre generally located at the southeast corner of East 21st Street and Truth Avenue in Missouri Route 71 from District R 1.5 to District 2 B 2-2 2 -2 to allow for a freestanding wireless communication facility. Planning and Zoning Committee recommends to pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a companion ordinance that I mentioned uh, 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 in discussion on the previous resolution. Planning and Zoning Economic Development Committee has reviewed it, recommends to pass. Any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, will the court call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Seven eyes. The ordinance is passed. 121051, rezoning a 1.23 acre tract of land joining located at the southwest corner of Northeast 82nd Street and North Oak Traffic Way from District B 3 2 to NR 7.5 to District B 1 1. Planning Zoning Committee recommends to pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is the future side, 82nd and North Oak, of a Dollar General store. Previously, the building was used for commercial purposes and was the site of a psychic business. Planning, Zoning, and Economic Development Committee has reviewed it and recommends you pass. I see there's no further discussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Eleven ayes. The ordinance is passed. Councilman Markison. Oh, I'm sorry. Honorable Mayor Pro Tem, I move that the charter requirement for reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket listed as scheduled committee advances, and that these ordinances be advanced for final reading and consideration at this time. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the charter requirements for the reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived and that the ordinances on today's docket listed as scheduled committee advances be advanced for final reading and consideration at this time. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, the clerk will call the roll on the motion. Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Eleven eyes. Will the clerk proceed with the advanced consent docket? <coughs> 130004, uh, approving and authorizing set of execution of a contract in the amount of $148,463 with the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority for the city to provide authority certain litigation services during the period from January 1 through December 31st, 2013. Finance Committee recommends do pass. 130010, approving and authorizing settlement of a claim for workers' compensation benefit filed by Thomas Frank for injuries resulting from an accident on March 15, 2005, while employed by the city. Finance Committee recommends you pass. 130017, counseling the City Council Standing Committee meetings and legislative and business sessions for the weeks of February 11th, March 11th, January 1st, August 5th, November 11th, December 23rd and December 30th, and changing the meeting dates for the week of November 25th, all in 2013. Finance Committee recommends you pass. I think One, that was July 1st. July 1st? Uh -huh. What did I say? I said on? January. Did I? Okay, thank you. One, three, printed correctly. I'm sorry. That's my 130018, authorizing Director of General Services to enter into a five-year lease agreement with Habitat for Humanity in Kansas City with one five-year option to renew for the restored location at 4701 Doremus. Finance Committee recommends you pass. 131019, authorizing Director of General Services to execute a lease agreement with Barry Central's Home Care for lease of city-owned property located at the Robert Mohart Multipurpose Center, 3200 Wayne, Kansas City, Missouri. Finance Committee recommends you pass. 
130002, estimated revenue in amount of $5,500 in the mis miscellaneous contribution account, appropriating it to the Domestic Violence Fund and recognizing an emergency public safety committee recommends be passed. Will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Seven ayes. The ordinance is passed. Will the clerk proceed with the advanced debate, do do debate docket? 130024, authorizing execution of a settlement agreement and release in the case of Kansas City, Missouri, Fraternal Order of Police Lodge number 99 versus Kansas City Board of Police Commissioners, reducing the contingent appropriations and appropriating $5 million from an unappropriated fund balance of the general fund to transfer to the Board of Police Commissioners and recognizing an emergency. Finance Committee recommends do pass. Councilwoman Markison. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. The Finance, uh, Governance, and Ethics Committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass. This is really um, ver a very, very uh, important uh, ordinance. The Fraternal Order of Police uh, had filed some litigation against us in response to our request during the last budget cycle that they uh, join our health care plan and we reserved uh, the five million dollars in savings that that would uh, incur to until they had joined that plan. There was a little dispute about whether or not that was um, an appropriate way to handle that, and we have come to an agreement which not only resolves this, this lawsuit, but um, opens the way for more meaningful and uh, productive discussions on pension reform. So we are very, very pleased to uh, have this come before the council and uh, recommend due pass. Councilman Sharp. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, see this uh, agreement be reached. Uh, uh, once both sides started communicating, uh, uh, that, that was the start to uh, uh, having an amiable uh, resolution of this. And it's particularly pleasing that we were able to come together on changes to the pension plan because, uh, as I think we all know, that will require legislative approval in Jefferson City. And if we weren't on the same page, that would be very, very difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. But I'm also pleased that the uh, police department will be joining the new entity we create to handle our employee health insurance. As you know, the existing uh, health care trusts that uh, Councilman Glover and I uh, serve on, and he's vice chair and I'm chair, has been very successful in, in holding down our rates while still maintaining a very high level of benefits. In the old days of double-digit rate increases uh, are fortunately uh, uh, just a memory. But the bigger your employee pool, the more clout you have when you negotiate with, this, with these uh, health insurance companies. So having a larger pool will help both uh, the police department and the city negotiate fair rates and good coverage. So it's in the best interest of everybody. There's some differences in the two benefit plans, but they're really very minor differences when you compare them side to side. And in the long run, this will assure that, that police department employees and city employees have good levels of benefit, benefits and are not gouged on the rates. Your comments on, on the, the health insurance is correct, but I, I want to elaborate a little bit on um, the communication. and. We're all residents of Kansas City, the elected officials, the police officers, the city employees, and uh, we've all felt this downturn and, and the pain that it has uh, created. We do feel very fortunate that we haven't had to deal with what other cities have had to deal with. But with that creates the opportunity for efficiencies and, and cooperation, and it's when everybody does sit down at the table and communicate, and that, that's what was achieved here. Um, we all represent a group of people. And uh, we have to do that to the best of our abilities, but it's when those people sit around a table and have uh, true conversations and compromise um, that these really difficult situations can uh, be worked out. Because in the end, we all want the same thing, and that's the uh, best Kansas City. So we appreciate the partnership, uh, the willingness to work it out, and look forward um, to, to great relationships moving forward. Is there any further discussion? Councilman Taylor. Talking about communication, I think these are great points. I just want to add, uh, I, I agree with everything that's been said, but uh, I think this is a, a good example of we've seen uh, without communication how this started 
And then when everybody was at the table, uh, things seemed, seemed to work a lot better. So I hope we can learn from this. And I mean, when I say we, I mean collectively, uh, the, the uh, uh, Board of Police Commissioners, the city staff involved in the city manager's office, uh, the council, and make sure that everybody's at the table that's impacted by a decision like this from day one, not uh, several meetings later, because that really does make the process go a lot smoother for everybody. So I want to commend the work, the hard work that's been done by uh, a lot of people and uh, look forward to moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, will the court call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Markson. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. 11 ayes. The ordinance is passed. 130026, appropriating $900,000 from the unappropriated fund balance of the Public Mass Transportation Fund, designating requisition authority and recognizing an emergency. Finance Committee recommends due pass. Councilwoman Markerson. Thank you, Mayor. The Finance, Governance, and Ethics Committee reviewed this and recommends due pass. It's an allocation from the uh, Public Mass Transportation Fund. Um, and it's, it's really very exciting, and you'll hear more about it um, when you, when uh, the chair of the, of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee talks about the uh, contract that this will fund, but it provides a software that will enable us to model traffic patterns. So as we are making decisions about traffic flow and growing our downtown and other congested areas of the city, it will ensure that we make the best decisions using uh, state-of-the-art data and uh, current real-time information about the traffic patterns, the buildings, the uh, number of pedestrians, bike lanes that are in our downtown, and then expanding it, could potentially expanding out to other areas. So it's very exciting that we are using technology in the way we become uh, more forward-thinking and accustomed to uh, using this as to make good government decisions. So we enthusiastically recommend that we support this. Councilman Ford. Thank you. I have a question for uh, the Chair of Finance. Yes. Uh, Councilwoman, was this in our, the current budget? Excuse me? Was this $900,000 in the current budget? It's in the, it's, yes, it's in the fund balance, and there is a balance of about $3 million in that fund. So this, wouldn't, this is part of the current budget. Yes, this is not what, new money. What, was it anticipated at the time of the uh, budget that this is how we would spend the money? No, but since it came through the appropriate channels to an ordinance committee hearings, then we can make those decisions about unappropriated fund balance uh, allocations. It, it seemed like a lot of money to have in an, uh, on a, uh, in an account. Well, it's a good thing we had it. And there's, uh, it's a good thing we have fund balances in certain accounts. So um, I think that our well, our finance director is not here, but maybe our acting city manager can uh, speak to. Yeah. I mean, my, my question. Fund. I just want to make sure this money wasn't was not intended for the uh, KCATA. No, it's fund balance, and it'll help. You know, it will help the bus service work better because we will understand too how the bus service interacts with like the streetcar, bike lanes, pedestrian lanes, traffic patterns. So um, this, is, um, this is going to be good for all of our modes of transportation. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Seven ayes. The ordinance is passed. 121067, vacating the north south alley east of Holly Street from West uh, 47th Street north to its terminus, Kansas City, Jackson County, Missouri, and directing the city clerk to record certain documents. Planning and zoning committee recommends to pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, currently, uh, this alley is not accessible because there's a school building on it. The, uh, the uh, E.F. Sweeney Volker Elementary School building sits on top of uh, what appears on city records as an alley. This uh, is a vacation of that alley. It clears title in order for the school district to uh, dispose of the property. Uh, the Planning, Zoning, Economic Development Committee has reviewed it and recommends to pass. Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. 
Aye. Marcus? Aye. Serco? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Sharp? Aye. James? Seven ayes. The ordinance is passed. 130001, appropriating $102,694 in the Community Development Block Grant Fund and authorizing Director of Neighborhood and Housing Services to enter into a contract amendment with Spoke Community Rebuilders for construction of housing. Planning Zoning Committee recommends you pass. Councilman Ford. Thank you. This is CDBG money uh, that's been used for single family housing construction. It was envisioned at the time once a a particular home was built or rehabbed, it would be sold and the money would be funneled back into the account to build the next home, uh, which is exactly what's happened here. Planning, Zoning, Economic Development Committee has reviewed this, recommends due pass. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk call the roll? Wagner? Aye. Davis? Aye. Ford? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Curls? Aye. Reed? Glover? Aye. Marcus? Aye. Sarko? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Sharp? James. Seven ayes. The ordinance is passed. 130013 authorizes the Second Amendment to the Facility Repair and Maintenance Contract for project number 62 T and M I P T and I M P for Gartner Construction Company for Kansas City Aviation Department. Transportation Committee recommends do pass. Councilman <coughs> Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is uh, the contract that aviation uses for uh, rehab or remodeling work that's done inside the terminals. Uh, the committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass. Any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Wagner? Aye. Davis? Aye. Ford? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Curls? Aye. Reed? Glover? Aye. Marcus? Aye. Sarko? Aye. Brooks? Aye. Taylor? Aye. Sharp? Aye. James? Seven ayes. The ordinance is passed. 130014, authorizing Director of Aviation to enter into a contract with Alexander Mechanical Contractors for overhaul base system steam and condescent repair at Kansas City International Airport, authorizing the expenditure of approximately $2,760,259 and recognizing an emergency. Transportation Committee recommends you pass. Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, with the uh, bankruptcy of American Airlines, uh, the American Airlines has been, was relieved of their financial obligations to the city of one, paying rent and also maintaining uh, the utility systems at the overhaul base. With that in mind, the um, existing steam system is in uh, major disrepair, uh, is leaking over a million gallons of water a year, and um, we need to perform some repairs on there to, to keep the utility system viable and efficient. The committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass. Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk call the roll? Wagner? Aye. Davis? Aye. Ford? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Curls? Aye. Reed? Glover? Aye. Marcuson. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Seven ayes. The ordinance is passed. 130027, authorizing a contract with Trans System Corporations in the amount of 900000 for Greater Downtown Traffic Simulation Module Project and recognizing an emergency. Transportation Committee recommends you pass. Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is the companion ordinance to the appropriation that we just passed earlier regarding uh, this particular project uh, and uh, answer a kind of a, a question that was brought up earlier. The ATA is actually supportive of this project because they're going to utilize uh, this particular, um, the results of this effort when it's concluded. Currently right now, um, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but I think it's important for people to understand what we're doing here. Um, there is some sophisticated computer software that is used to um, simulate uh, traffic uh, that's available on the market. Um, and it simulates traffic at a very detailed level. It's not just moving people from one side of the city to the other and seeing what those demand and uh, demand uh, patterns are. It's actually modeling things uh, on a very detailed basis. There's currently only three uh, users or outlets for that uh, software here currently in the region. Um, one, MoDOT has it for their own purposes. Uh, Mid-America Regional Council has it for the regional purposes. And uh, HNTB, a uh, consulting firm, has it. In the past, every time the city needs to answer a question like, what if we grand, grand and change the lanes on it and put bike lanes on there, what would that do? Um, in order to really answer that question, you have to basically contract with HNTB, and they go back into their lab and come out with an answer, but what's in their lab, we don't have access to. Um, about 10 years ago, we started two-waying a number of streets downtown uh, those two ways, I would, I would 
suggest have been very successful. We have some to complete. However, anytime you make a change, uh, change is disruptive. People sometimes are not comfortable with change, and they like to understand exactly what the impacts of that change will be. Uh, so in completing some of our two ways downtown, um, some property owners said, we want to see, we want to see the 10-year-old data uh, that was done before you had Sprint, before you had the Performing Arts Center, before you had 40,000 people living downtown. We want to see that updated um, so that we can uh, understand the, whether these two wings are going to create any sort of fatal flaws to the traffic pattern downtown. Uh, we could not do that uh, in-house, so we had to go to uh, HNTB, which we did, and we hired them, and they've updated the traffic model, and they've ran the simulation, and they've come back from their lab with the answer, and, and it's kind of the answer everybody thought was like, well, this will be okay. It's, it's not going to break anything, but we couldn't do that in-house. In reaction to that, Public Works decided that we really need to bring this in-house uh, and be as sophisticated as being a large city, having a, a downtown that's no longer a, a sleepy downtown in the evenings and lots of people living here, lots of things to do. We need to, we need to, we need to grow up a little bit as, as far as the tools go. And Public Works decided to, um, they wanted to purchase this software. Then you got to actually build the city inside the software. It's kind of like a video game on steroids. And you actually have to train people then to manage the software after it's done because if you don't keep it current, the data in there grows stale and it's no good for you anymore. To train how to use it and understand it and how to keep it current. And then of course to build this model. So a portion of this is to buy the software and the licenses that go with it. A portion of this is to train several people on how to use the software. But the bulk of it is actually to build a simulation of downtown Kansas City inside the software. Um, they decided that this is what they wanted to do and um, they also, the city manager decided that that he would seek the council approval uh, to pay for it in the way that we just approved. Um, I, was, I will say that um, we believe that we were being reactionary at the time. I think my, my, my thought was we were being reactionary uh, public Works thought we were kind of being reaction, reactionary to these concerns that were being raised. But, we, but after we thought about it, we thought, you know, this is really going to help us in the long run. Because now we have the software, if we need to, for example, over at 18th and Vine, we changed uh, some two-way, one-way streets. We changed the direction of them uh, from going one way to the other. We could actually then take the software, put in a six or seven block radius of uh, 18th and Vine into this software, and then say, okay, what, what will happen? when we change these. We can answer these questions now. We can answer, we will be able to answer perhaps a question like what happens if we put a traffic signal in or take a traffic signal out if we have the time for it. We can, um, small businesses perhaps that are downtown that want to come downtown where we have the model, we can maybe look at not requiring them to do a traffic study because we can do the traffic study internally rather than require the small business to pay a consultant to do that traffic study as part of their startup costs. So I think there's going to be a lot of ancillary benefits around this. Um, uh, we will have to stay diligent as a council to make sure in years future that staff is truly keeping the model up to date and not letting it go stale. Um, we have to adequately fund public works to, so they have the people to do that. Um, and then we have to make, uh, and then, and that, and that will be a good thing. One of the things that they will do as part of this is they will actually go out and map real world conditions. They will they will get to a confidence level of 95%, and it's a statistical measurement, that the model will match 95% of the real world in statistical conditions so that it won't be just the model's doing one thing, but you go outside and you look and say, well, that's really not what's happening. They will, they will validate this model before they turn it over to us. Trans Systems is the local lead contractor on this, but they hired a firm, I can't remember that, their acronym off the top of my head, but they're one of the top business district modelers in the United States and have modeled several major cities at this level. So um, I guess having a vibrant downtown um, is a good thing, that is a goal of ours and it's been um, sought after by several <laughs> terms and it's now, now we have to worry about traffic problems whereas one time all we had to worry about was how to get everybody home and how to get everybody in in the morning. Now it's not quite that simple. So having to spend this and, and, and get to be a more sophisticated level is a very good thing for the city. And uh, committee has reviewed this and recommends to pass.
My question, Councilwoman Marcus or Johnson can answer. Uh, is it my understanding that the 900,000 um, came from a fund that can only be used for transportation uh, type issues? Yes. Um, the bulk of that fund does go to support the bus service and, the, and, the, and that um, amount has varied um, through various budget cycles. Um, but this is the, uh, that was the very first question out of my mouth when Public Works brought this to me was, well, how are you going to pay for it? And their response was, the city manager says he will introduce an ordinance to get it out of this particular account. So, I mean, I think the question clarifies that there isn't just 900,000 sitting around somewhere. It's in a fund that's <laughs> allocated for these types of, of work to be done to maintain our traffic flow, not only through bus service and stoplights, but... But the ATA is currently doing a comprehensive services analysis, just kicking it off actually as of today. For downtown they did the rest of the city now they're just doing downtown and they specifically said at the downtown council executive committee this morning that they will utilize this tool once it's it's going to take us about six months to get it up and running but once it's done they will utilize it not only for their what they're working on right now but hopefully they'll hopefully they'll continue to use it um, into the future and other folks that need to understand how traffic moves downtown whether you're a bike advocate, a pet advocate, or a vehicular person, or a transit person, whatever, or a business that's trying to locate down here, or a large employer like the General Services Administration, you'll be able to come to the city and we can run these simulations and understand whether your employees or residents or customers or users can truly function from a transportation point of view. In, in downtown Kansas City. Something just crossed my mind. A, 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 an end user would be our own fire department also. Yeah, I think that uh, um, um, Councilman Sharp brought up, I think, in committee about how um, uh, emergency personnel at some signals can cause uh, the signals to change, although I don't think we've consistently applied that throughout the city. And I know of some areas where, where we have a fire department, an ambulance over here, and a hospital over here and about eight signals in between and we and they can't change them and I'm not exactly sure how that um, why that is but maybe it's something that we need to look at further and of course in downtown then we could we could say if a fire truck was crossing downtown once we have this uh, model and they're able to change the signals how would that disrupt rush hour for example or how much response time would how, be changed yeah, how, how would it change how can we make ambulance response time perhaps better downtown Efficiency through technology. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk call a roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Pearl. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Serco. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Seven eyes. The ordinance is passed. Who is uh, acting as me? Councilman Johnson. Second reading. Are we tag teaming? How are we doing it? I mean, I guess you're first. I have your name. On. No, I already did mine. <laughs> oh, all right, right. Honorable Mayor, I move the charter requirement for reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket listed as second readings and that they be placed on the docket next week for third reading. Second. It has been moved and seconded that the charter requirements for the reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket listed as second readings and that they be placed on the docket next week for third reading. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Seven ayes. The motion passes. Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Madam I'm Mayor. staring at you. <laughs> I move the charter requirement for reading ordinances on three separate days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket listed as first readings and that these ordinances be introduced as listed to the committee so designated. You know, at least you didn't call me Councilman Sharp. Suck. <laughs> Is this true? Is this true? <laughs> It's been moved and seconded that the charter requirement for the reading of ordinances on three separate days be waived for the ordinances on today's docket listed as first readings and that these ordinances be introduced as listed to the committee so designated. Is there any discussion? 
Seeing no discussion, will the clerk call the roll? Wagner. Aye. Davis. Aye. Ford. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Curls. Aye. Reed. Glover. Aye. Markson. Aye. Sarko. Aye. Brooks. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Sharp. Aye. James. Seven ayes. The motion passes. Is there anything else to come before this body? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Move. Second. It has been moved. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned.